I can't do the sound the soundtrack. Just what playing. was that? That's supposed to be. Hey, we get, we're back with Fourth Seat Cinema. Well, yeah, a long time after we did the last one. Yeah, it's been a little while. Yeah, we, we've watched uh, plenty of Takahashi to catch up. Yes, yes. and and uh, now we just finished watching The Matrix. The Matrix, which the, I'd never seen before. You've never seen it before. I have. I haven't seen it in a while, but I've watched the, it enough that I know it by heart. For those of you new to this uh, Fourth Seat Cinema series, this is Jack's project, and. Yeah. Basically, he makes me watch movies that I've never seen. Yeah. And then we talk about them. Yes. And that's the whole thing. Yes. And the vain attempt to impress him, but I, I know that that's not going to happen, but I do know he has a good mind for uh, for that kind of stuff, so... I'm, I'm, I have taken film theory classes. I, yes. I'm a very analytical viewer, yes. but I am also a very biased viewer, because I generally hate anything that is not animated. Yeah, hence the project. So, The Matrix, uh, 1999, directed by... Formerly Larry and Andy Wachowski, I mentioned uh, they, in the beginning that um, they were once the Wachowski brothers. Wachowski brothers, but it turned, and I thought one of them turned transgender. I was wrong; both of them did. Oh. So now they're Lana and Lily Wachowski. Okay, it was and made the, when they were still, you know. That's that's actually kind of sweet. That is, yes, yes. Although, uh, yeah, one's got really cool dyed hair. Oh yeah. One, another one's bald, but enough about that. Uh, so yeah, Cyberpunk Wusha. Yeah. Uh, it was actually weird that we watched this because it drew a lot of parallels to that comic that I showed you the other day. Oh, you're talking about the, uh, I, uh, the, 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 I know, I know which one you're talking I about. I gotta look up the guy's name. Hentai. Well, it was not, not, it, not that, strictly. It, that one in particular was not hentai. He draws <laughs> a lot of very, very weird and often hentai stuff, but this one was not. Yeah, so... Basically, but it did have a very Matrixy plotline. The, ba- the the Matrix plotline basically is a uh, guy realize guy thinks that something's up with his world. There's something not quite right. Guy tells him, "Don't worry, it's all fake." Freeze him, and then they fight against uh, against the oppressive regime. Pretty much, yes. Yes, the oppressive. It's a very simple plot. Uh, Kago Shintaro Parataxis is what it's called. Okay. Inter- inter- interesting read. Anyway. So I do. Oh, no, I'm not. What's that? <laughs> that was a pop-up. Ad. Okay, good. <laughs> and anyway, so so obviously I drew a lot of parallels to Ghost in the Shell watching this. Yes, uh, Ghost I, in the Shell came out first. Did so. it? Did you check that? I'll I'll double check. I've, I'll fact check. Because you but. thought that was Ghost in the Shell came out first as a manga. I think it was written as like a novel first. Okay. Go- it's our third right. our third uh, cast member of this Google. When did Ghost in the Shell come out? Sorry, Andrew. Wrong one! Wrong. Just look up Ghost in the Shell on Wikipedia. Yeah, I am. I am. Uh, Ghost in the Shell came out in... Oh, I should probably look up the first... 1995 okay, was the so film. Yeah. So the manga was sooner, which means that, yeah, Wachowskis were, were, were totally... Uh, Not that the concept hasn't existed before Ghost in the Shell. Oh, no. The whole cyberization has been a very popular thing yeah, in so, uh, cyberpunk. So the main character is played by uh, Keanu Reeves. Yes. Who most of you youngsters will probably know from John Wick. I, I guess. But I hope more of you will know him from The Matrix. I think in order of famousness, he's most known from The Matrix, followed by maybe Constantine, followed by John Wick. Uh, I'd say there'd be some. There are some people that remember him from Bill and Ted. Was he in Bill and Ted? Yes, he was. He was one of. He was. One of the... He was either Bill or Ted. I don't remember which. Excellent! Yeah. Yeah, so he was a surfer, stoner dude. Then he was guy trapped in, like, virtual reality. Uh, oh, chosen wait, wait one. we don't know that yet. That, we're not at that <laughs> point of the movie. Then then he became a hitman. A heartbroken hitman. Yeah. And uh, he also did some underground, like, martial arts movies and stuff that I gotta watch. Yeah. Uh, have I, you seen Constantine? I have, yeah. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. I... Better than uh, the Dracula Reborn movie. Uh, it's a Dracula <laughs> Resurrection. Yeah, sure. Uh, Dracula Two Thousand. That. <laughs> that one. No, that no, movie no, no. was awful. Was it Dracula? It came out recently, like last year. Oh, the one telling the story from Dracula's perspective. Oh yeah, Dracula Untold. <laughs> that. I've never seen that, but by all accounts, it sounds terrible. So I'm gonna skip it. Okay. Uh, it also has a pre. It has Lawrence Fishburne as well. Post. Uh, Post Event Horizon. The I Matrix think. does. Yes, okay. Lawrence Fishburne is the. Is he was Morpheus. not in Dracula Untold. No, he wasn't. Bless good, his soul. Good, good for him. 
Uh, that neither, was Morpheus. neither was Keanu Reeves. He that was, was Morpheus, in, right? Was, yeah, uh, Morpheus was was uh, was Ke- Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, I don't I don't blame you for not knowing these things because you're not uh, you're not a cinemaphile. Well, not on. I I don't know my re- my real life actors. No, no, you, you're you're skilled with voice actors though. Uh, and then a bunch of other people. One of them is Joey Pants. Now, oh, another thing you should have looked up. I now I feel like I'd I'd been told at some point that this was a relatively low budget movie. Oh, budget. I'll I'll take a look at the budget. Uh, we should we should start with actually talking about the movie. Itself. I guess. Do we do the same thing as we did for Fargo and just kind of walk our way through it? Yeah, we'll go from beginning to end. So, so starts is, out with every fuck office space dude. Yeah. Uh. Oh, Mr. Anderson. Oh uh, no, no, no! It, 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 before that, you you get a, a phone call with like some numbers on screen and just like, hey, is this guy the one? I think so. Are you sure? No, but we'll confirm it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, do you hear that? No. Uh, did you tap me? Of course not. Whatever. Bye. <laughs> that was pretty much the extent of that conversation. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm still looking it up. But yeah, it just show, goes to show you that yes, this is cyberpunk, and uh, and the guy's in his bedroom on his computer, and he gets a message. Well, you're skipping the entire first act act of the film, wherein well, obviously Trinity it was runs, not very memorable. Then, uh, okay, Trinity gets caught, runs from some agents. Agents pursue her. Uh, Did that happen? Yeah, she was running from the agents in the first act of the. You forgot the like the first scene of the film. I only remember it opening with the, the the Neo in his bedroom. Budget was sixty three million. Okay, so that's not very low. No, no, you said it was a low budget. I was thinking movie. of something else. Though. You would have known if it was low budget. I don't um, know. Some some projects do very well despite budget. Oh, of course, it, but there's a lot of effects here, a lot of prop design that had to go in. I'm pretty sure twenty million was just for the prop, the set design alone. I'm sure. Good, good CG, whatever whatever uh, they use. Yeah, it, it holds up. Yeah. The CG. Um, speaking of CG, I don't know if this is that or wire works, but but the first scene when Trinity just crosses the giant gap. Oh yeah, that that chase. I yeah, remember that. Yeah, and the cops like, that's impossible. Nothing is impossible. You fucking witnessed it. You gotta. You got seeing is believing at that point. Yeah. Well, then again, the Matrix teaches you that seeing necessarily isn't believing. And so. then there's that one cop in the background who's super fred up on Wuxia films, and he's like, "I knew this was real." <laughs> All right, I'm glad. I'm living the best timeline. No, uh, so like it's funny because it, they introduce you. The first actual character you're introduced to, besides Trinity, is Agent Smith. Yep. <laughs> Business suit. Like, he looks like an FBI agent. He looks like every single, like, government agent rolled into one. He looks like, like Lumberg. Yeah. Not played by the same actor, though. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Need... Yeah, I'm just gonna need you to come with me quietly. Yeah, I heard if you... you can put your I heard you away. tried to go in and arrest this chick alone. Yeah? It's just a girl. Yeah, your cops are probably already dead. If you could just leave this to me... That'd be great. <laughs> he has such a disdain for everybody throughout this entire movie. It's great. Smith, Lumberg, or both? Both. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, now you just made me picture Neo imagining Smith fucking Trinity. <laughs> oh no, if he fucked her, he would consider it bestiality. You heard that speech he gave second act of the film? Yeah. Or no, it was third act at that point. Anyway... Um, so we then get we then cut to uh, Thomas J. Anderson, aka Neo, sitting in his really nice hacker cl- cave. Yeah, uh, I, he fell seemed to fall asleep. I guess, man, the internet looked really shitty in the nineties. Huh? Did we ever find out what it was he was selling to those dudes? Was it just like porn? I <laughs> I sell I only sell porn through mini discs. I well maybe it was nineteen ninety nine maybe. Pli- I think it was implied to be, like, some hacker shit. Were like, floppy disks so popular in 99? Yeah, I think they were moving towards CDs, but I it was write, kind of in this limbo. Uh, it looked like those weren't floppy disks, those were mini disks. I write Choose Your Own Adventure Erotica. <laughs> and he sells it for $2,000. It's really they good shit. A price, they named a price, so whatever software he's selling is worth $2,000. I mean, it's obvious. Okay, he was... We found out later, so it was obviously something illegal. Yeah. Something yeah. hacking related, he, probably. He apparently broke every every single computer law that they have a law for. <laughs> so 
So I, I went into this movie knowing a, re- a decent amount about it. At the very yeah, least. Yeah, you, so, you knew the signature scenes at least. So uh, I, I commented immediately. So he's a software designer working in software. <laughs> you weren't far off. That's meta as shit. But yeah, uh, basically Neo was... Uh, somebody hacked his computer telling him, Hey Neo, the Matrix got you. Follow the White Rabbit. And he tries using Control X to get rid of it. Oh yeah, I was yeah. wondering what 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 was he, what was the significance of using cut? cut? And it took you a second to realize what I was talking oh, about. Oh yeah, I just control X. Maybe it was like, well, those stupid ass people won't know like what what key key bindings are. We Especially, just need a computer command for him to put in so it looks realistic. Yeah, control X and then escape several times. Escape, escape. <laughs> Greatest hacker in the Matrix, apparently. And there's the White Rabbit tattoo, yeah, so, and he goes to the club. Yes, where... and he's at the club, and Dracula's playing by Rob Zombie. Yeah. You didn't expect that! <laughs> no, I, was, I wasn't what expecting... Were you ex- okay, I'm gonna ask you, what were you expecting? Uh, more of the kind of music that played during the gunfight in the airport or bank or whatever. Oh, Just you're... the kind of techno beat stuff, not suddenly like... grunge. <laughs> That's, it's metal, but you're... I, yeah. It's a good song, It's a, it was a... I guess. So they go there, and then Trinity shows up, look at not looking worse for her. Basically, tells him. It basically hits him more about what the Matrix is, but doesn't outright tell him because apparently nobody can be told what the Matrix is. No, they got to just wave the candy in front of him and entice him over. <laughs> and then, as it turns out, once you take it, you know what it is. You're gonna wish you hadn't. Yep. <laughs> so a- after the after the club scene is when he he gets, gets late for cont- work. He goes, and then we find out he's actually also like. Oh, and that's when they're looking for him, right? Uh, you're moving a bit fast, but sorry, yeah. yeah. You, uh, you guide me then. So, there's a club scene. She tells, she's like telling him, Hey, uh, yeah, the Matrix has you. Uh, we'll, we'll be back for you soon. Uh, don't sweat anything. Just, you know, act like nothing, act like everything's casual. Yeah. Just, just remember, they're watching you. Who? The, the Matrix. Just, and then the, the leave it that, and he, he initially didn't want to go to this club, because he, he, he has work tomorrow, and somehow manages to oversleep. Yeah. That, Does he? Did that happen? Yeah, 919, and he's, like, apparently he was late to work, and his boss called him up, and is like, and is like, gives him a thing about, about, we need synergy in the workplace, if you're, if you have a problem, we all have a problem. Yeah. What, what was the name of his company, that, that bullshit company that he worked for? I don't remember. It like, was something very Cerebellum or something? Uh, Metacortex? Yeah, that's it! Metacortex. And I said that was a very apt and it, ironic name. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> it's the little things in movies sometimes. So, he's there. I, what is it? I guess software programmers just, you know, program improvements to the Matrix? Well, that's what we were talking about, is if they're programming software in software, or if maybe they've got them, like, unbeknownst to them, working on the Matrix while they're in it. <laughs> they're having to rebuild the internet from scratch since all that tech was lost a long time ago. Obviously, it's still 1999. <laughs> it's always 1999, apparently. <laughs> always the 90s. Sliding time scale, not, and people never age. Vanilla Ice is on his 50th album. It's like Rama one half. Three <laughs> years later, they're the same age. Three years later, it's still 1999. And The Simpsons. <laughs> Lots all- of sliding time scale series. Yes. Anyway, so then he goes back to his workspace, right? Yeah, he's going back to his workspace, gets a package, which is just a cell phone, and then the cell phone rings. It's all very cool. And Morpheus is calling him himself for he's like, Oh, turns out we don't have that much time. You should get out of there now. They're looking for you. They're... Who? Look look outside. He sees a bunch of people in business suits. He's like, Shit! Yes. (laughs) Morpheus, for those of you unaware, actually the name of the god of dreams in, like, mythology. Which makes sense. It's, It's a good fit. Yeah. I mean... That's the thing, this movie contains a lot of religious overtones. Yeah, like, you, you, you Not necessarily this. religious, just like, Gnostic, just... Like, it's, it's all symbolism. Yeah. Cyberpunk with just a lot of symbolism in it. Yeah. Like, like, Xenogears. We can talk about that in more detail at the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll get to that. Um, so... So he's trying to leave, he drops his cell phone, Morpheus asks him to, like, climb a scaffold in order to, like, evade, evade the fuzz, and he's like, I, I, I'm not willing to do that. Fuck that. Fuck that. And then we cut to him being captured. Yes! 
<laughs> it's just Which like, at least it is at least trope breaking for the action genre. He doesn't yeah. just follow Eagle Eye blindly along. So <laughs> Eagle Eye doesn't follow the operator. Just like no, I'm not. I'm not doing this. I did see that movie too. Eagle Eye. Yeah. Well, that's that's discounted as a future episode. Uh, that's a shame. Oh, well, so not he's really... captured. He's in a room with Mr. Smith. Yeah, Mr. Smith. Yeah, is are like... the other two agents there too? Yeah, they're there, just kind of flanking him, making sure he doesn't, you know, do anything rash. So Mr. Smith tells him, you know, we've been looking for you. You're guilty of every cybercrime in existence. <laughs> that's, that's, but that's okay. That's, we can wipe the slate clean, Mr. Yeah, Anonymous. We can we can do that. Here, listen. What are they, well, you can either continue the path well, uh, on the path you're pathing, which leads to some pretty, you know, we may have to make you disappear, or... You can help us find Morpheus, and, uh, I don't know, you can be top king shit of Fuck Mountain. You help us, or else you bend over and we hand you over to Steve Jobs. <laughs> and, of course, like, and, ne and Neo is just like, give me a phone call. Flips him off. Yeah, very flippant dude. And the, the surprising part after that, though, is that Smith is not at all hesitant to show off his superpowers. Oh, yeah, he... he, he... Like uh, later on in the superpowers. Film, later on in the film, there's that homeless guy who just sees that and just just awestruck. That's impossible. Yeah, <laughs> but Smith has no qualms about just doing the impossible to Neo. We don't we don't give a shit if you know we're like do, can do this. And when we say doing the impossible, he means uh, removing his mouth. Yes, he just kind of fuses together, and then and then he drops like an insect in his in his belly button. I made the joke like he holds the insect up now. Bend over. <laughs> No, uh, uh, no, it actually looked more painful. Yes, yes, that that did not look pleasant at all. So it goes into him, and he just immediately wakes up. And then, and uh, Morpheus is like, "Look, I, I know you're too much of a pussy, then, but I'll give you another chance. Yeah, hop, meet me under a bridge. We'll uh, we'll get you all sorted out." And apparently, they were hitting, being hit by the fucking typhoon of the century. <laughs> Okay, if they're if the Matrix is okay, so it's the Matrix. It's all, all everything's like automated by computers. What fucking program decided? Hey, we'll just make it raining tonight. There's there's no plants. That's how they enforce the curfew. Shitty, <laughs> shitty night weather. Man, the weather at night's just awful. I always want to go out and party, but it's just not happening. It's like God's always scolding me. <laughs> God, hey, God is real and it hates you. But he and goes to the bridge. Yeah, he goes to the bridge. In the pouring, pouring rain. Yeah, so two women are there. One's holding a, a gun to his head. The other one's going, take off your shirt. <laughs> you know, all in all, a good way to meet women. Yeah. So, uh, there's good reason for that, though. He removes... He, they remove the bug from his belly button. He's like, that's real! Well, he tries to leave first, and then they say, oh, come on, don't be a bitch. Oh, yeah. He's like, there's my way or the highway, and he's about to leave, and Trudy's like, really? You're, you're actually you're actually gonna leave? You've come this far. I mean... You, you saw what that Smith dude was, was, like, willing to do to you. Then they electrocute and suck the bug out of him. Yes. Very and, pleasant. Yeah, and then they throw it away, and I guess at that point the agents just give they up. They just slap a band-aid on him, and then they're at their at their meeting place. Yes. What do you say? You said it looked like shit. <laughs> it was, it, I'm sure it was nice 200 years ago. <laughs> 200 years ago Matrix time or 200 years ago it was very opulent but also very worn out <laughs> like humanity I guess yeah and uh, that, that kind of in introduces an interesting well we'll get to that when we talk more about the Matrix All right, Matrix so, time so he arrives and Morpheus is like hi I'm Morpheus he was like oh man I'm your biggest fan and Morpheus is like no 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 I'm your biggest fan. He didn't quite say that, but... but it's like, can you imagine... Pleasure's all mine! Can you imagine Luffy being in that situation? He walks in on Morpheus, sees the trench coat and the sunglasses. That's so cool! <laughs> oh, man. You know, the Matrix would, like, explain how... The, however the fuck, uh... The <laughs> that's just all the works. anime universes are different worlds in the Matrix with it, different it, physics. It's the world you most want... It to be true. Well, they tried that once, remember? <laughs> but people rejected it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wouldn't. They, they, they. Anyway. And that's when the pills happen, right? Yeah. So he basically explained, like, hit some more about what the Matrix is. Like, you can feel it everywhere. When you go to work. When you're, like, fucking someone. When you're, when you're paying your taxes. Yeah. That was the most surprising point. Like, you pay taxes in the Matrix? Yeah, kind of drawing parallels to anarchism. 
Yeah. Like, you know, you know you're a slave, Neo. You're a slave. You pay taxes to this machine. They don't even need taxes. Nope. So then he offers him a choice. You can take the blue pill, which I guess will kill him. He says it'll, he tells him it'll make him go to bed and believe. You'll wake up and you'll believe whatever you want to believe. Or you take this red pill. And go deeper in the hole. Show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Oh, yeah. Great. That's a great line. That's a... That's a movie-making line. Yeah. So you have deep the rabbit hole goes. One of one of the many very famous scenes is the red pill and blue pill. Yes. So he thinks about it for a second. And he just reaches for the for the red pill. And just like, all right, sure, let's see, let's ride this out. And then uh, I was like, thinking, then things go south. <laughs> well, yeah, because you're going down the rabbit hole. That's that's ultra south. Yeah. Although it's kind of coming out of the rabbit hole. As it turns out, yeah. It turns out we were in Wonderland this entire time. Were you going to say something else? Uh, he takes the pill. They go to this other room where everybody's there with all, all this electrical equipment. They're talking at the time, techno babble. Yeah. So he sits down. He, he, and people are, like, dropping more references. Uh, Joey Pants' character, Cypher, is, like, saying, Means buckle up, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. See, dude, you missed the memo. We're doing Wonderland punk. No, that's how that's how you know he's the traitor because he's going through this other thing. He actually hates Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> no, shut, no, shut no, up, Cipher. Follow the script. Okay, the joke is is that is that like like in Wizard of Oz, she comes back to reality in the first place. Uh, so does Cipher want to return to the Matrix? Yeah, but we'll get to that. Uh, most redneck looking fucker in the movie. Oh though. yeah, no, the dude was also um. He was also a, the cop in uh, Memento. Oh, I haven't seen Memento. Like, I know the gimmick of it, but I haven't seen it. It's actually a good movie. That might be a, a stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and we were heels in front of him, and he's just like, did any one of you see that? And then he turns into the Silver Surfer. Yes. <laughs> he takes his fingers in it, he just climbs up his leg, more techno babble is screamed, and then... The uh, bass drops. And then, yeah, the bass drops. And he wakes up. Yep. And he wakes up in his grocery, pod. He wakes up at the grocery store, essentially. Yeah. So pod he's, people. Yeah. They uh they they flush him. He gets picked up by uh by the crew. And and then as he's staring at Morpheus's real life face, he says, Morpheus says, "Welcome to the real world." Also, he's a bald man, baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, Neo is. Neo's bald. A lot of, lot of very, uh, a lot of painful looking body modification happening around this point. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, so the next few scenes, they're trying to, like, you know, make him so that he can actually function. They do acupuncture, they do surgery, try to cover up the worst of the holes. Uh, Muscle atrophy's a bitch. By the way, when he woke up, he didn't just wake up. He woke up with all these wires sticking out of him. Obviously, yeah. One, Especially one in just the back of his head. Yeah. The important one. That's yeah. how that that immediately drew the comparison to Ghost in the Shell with yeah. the hacking. Although Ghost in the Shells looked a little more uh, ergonomic, <laughs> rather than just they, the they one. had a USB port. Yeah, rather than just a giant fucking wire, not a vacuum tube. <laughs> well, I mean, let's talk. Let's talk about like pseudoscience here for a second. The uh, presumably to transfer like lifelike images and like sensation. Directly to your brain, that's going to require a lot of throughput. Yeah. So I'm 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 thinking I don't know terabytes per second. Maybe I don't. Like know. maybe it tops out at like fifty terabytes per second. I don't know. It's like a really 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 fast fiber optic cable. Yeah. I don't know how what the de what the brain's processing power is like. I don't know. Maybe the machine. You think we could Google that? Yeah. Uh, what is the human's brain processing power? What is the processing power of a human brain? Here's a summary from Cora. According to Henry Markram, full brain emulation will need a computer with an exaflop. Markram seems to have succeeded in emulating the processing ability of cortical columns. An exaflop is flops, or one million teraflops. As for your question, but no one knows the true computation power of the human brain yet. Okay, so... And so Techno babble, got it. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, basically really, really, really fucking fast. Thank you, Major Motoko. Yeah. That Can you imagine if you had, like, fictional characters you could do as, as speech for uh, Google? They do that with Cortana, like uh, yeah. Microsoft does. 
so yeah, basically, really fast. And anyway, almost nearly instant. There's no uh, there's no latency at all. Which kind of brings me to the it's I, super internet. Yeah, they they if they haven't at this point, they around this time they introduce the explain the matrix how it's all a virtual world created oh, yeah. by the machines. So here's here's what happened. Basically, Morpheus is like, "All right, we fix your muscles. Here, I'll introduce you to the rest of the crew." Introduces basically introduces Neo to the two characters he hasn't yet yet he hasn't met yet. None of both of them are people who, rather than being homegrown by the Matrix, are just people that just were were born into into freedom. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. So are they? Are we supposed to assume they're from Zion? Uh, yeah, yeah, Zion, the the last human city left in in the world because yeah. it's post apocalyptic and ruled by machines. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> so they plug they plug uh, Neo back in and they explain. Yeah, what you're seeing right now is your digital avatar. Is your digital image? Uh, this isn't real. We're uh, we're in like a our own computer space. Uh, let me show you something. So then it goes into a, like a TED talk for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he basically I'll... says uh, he says, "Oh, the Matrix is a dream world. It's meant to you know keep our minds distracted. The real world is a post-apocalyptic hellhole where we blot it out the sky in order to try to starve the machines in a in a war with them." As a result, the machines enslaved us for our pro our uh, thermal body heat. Any questions? It looks like the end of a Satoshi Kon movie. Yeah. <laughs> I bet if you put that shot from the Matrix next to the ending shot of Paprika, you couldn't tell the difference. Oh no! Like I was I was watching this and I'm like, you know, Paprika really reminds me of the Matrix. I'm really reminded of Paprika right now. Cause yeah. Well, Matrix goes to Paprika and then Paprika goes to Inception. It's like, yeah. <laughs> So, Matrix has ties to Inception. Sure. But, well, I, I did draw some comparisons while watching the movie because of the, you know, real world, dream world thing. Yeah. I, I like I like plots like that where it's like, is this reality or is this a sub-reality? You don't know. Yeah. And shit is different in each reality. The Will shit the you top think... ever stop spinning? Yeah. So, Neo is kind of disturbed by this news. Obviously. Yeah, he just doesn't want to believe it. Comes out of the virtual world... In a little bit of a tizzy. Yeah, he's kind of upset, but he recovers quite nicely. Yeah. He lays down for a bit, and, and Morphe's like, Sorry, when somebody gets too old, it, it, they don't want to accept it. But you're special. This was all You're the one. This was all paralleled very closely in that manga, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. It absolutely had a Matrix plotline. <laughs> I don't know when it came out. Uh. Could be very old. He's been drawing forever. Anyway. So... <clears throat> So then he's like, he's like, all right, get some sleep. We'll we'll get you trained tomorrow. And then uh, then we we're introduced to the hacker character Tank. Oh, is he the, is he the only hacker? No, he's well, he's the designated computer guy. Yeah. Well, because he doesn't well, have any any like wires, he's the guy they designate to manage the to like manage the mainframe. He's Jeremy from Code Lyoko. Exactly. He he doesn't go in. He just uh, he just he operates. He's an operator. And then there's the young guy who designed Ilita. Oh yeah, mouse. But he's got wires. Yeah. Oh my god, that he doesn't have much like screen time. But what little screen time he does makes me wish he had more. Was that around this point that he started talking? No, he they had to go no, into the. the first thing they first. train him. So yeah. so tank is like, okay, we, we should give you some operational programs. But fuck that. Let's get some. Let's get some martial arts. Obviously. So that, this that's is the second the most half. Important thing. So the second half of this movie, the second genre of this movie, is wuxia. Yeah, like you know, so sorts... cyberpunk wuxia. Yeah, I, I mean, no wonder the movie was popular. Uh, I mean, wuxia didn't have a lot of grounding in the West at this point or any point really. So how do you train in this world of the Matrix? You don't like actually practice anymore. Yeah, you just upload the information directly to your brain. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So they upload a lot of stuff. I, I noticed Drunken Boxing was in there as well. Yeah. They basically upload the entire history of martial arts to his brain. Yeah, and I mean, I drew comparisons to uh, Big Hero 6, the Baymax thing. Yeah. Which yeah, obviously was, came after this. Of course. But it's just, it's so handy. Just be, I, I would, if I could, I would just upload everything that it took to be like a really good programmer into my brain. Yeah. That'd be cool. Just, alright, I'm good. It's like, it's like five years of college just compressed into one data transfer. Sure would be convenient. Very much so. Too bad it doesn't exist. 
Yeah. Yet. Yet. Doesn't exist yet. Yeah, we got we just gotta figure out what the throughput of a of of a human brain is. Yes. Uh so 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 more so Neo's like like oh man, it's amazing, I'm no kung fu and Morphe's like, Cool, let's try it out, bro. So then they go into this dojo like thing and Morpheus is like, Yeah, this is accurately like represents how the Matrix generally reacts. So yeah, it's a good training environment. You'll notice that you're able to uh, bend some rules and break others. Yeah. Which leads me to the question, what would have happened if the one, as it turned out, or the one that Morpheus had recruited had been a full-on lucid dreamer? Oh, man. You think that's how they decided it? Like, lucid dreaming? Oh, obviously not, because Neo struggled a lot with it. Yeah, basically the entire uh, dojo scene was just... Morpheus saying, you gotta free your mind, you gotta believe. The whole movie, really, is a lot of parallels to, like, self-affirmation. Yeah, self-esteem. Other, basically, all the villains were telling him, telling him, you got, you, you have a certain, you have a set role, you gotta do it, in the end of the day, you're worthless, whereas Morpheus was like, no, you're worth something, you're, you're the, cho- you gotta throw away your self-restraints. Yeah. So, they fight, Morf- uh, Neo mostly spends his time getting his ass kicked. Uh, he, he manages to get the, gain the upper hand at the, end, at the very end, and then Morpheus moves on to the next thing. He's like, we're gonna teach you how to jump good! Did he? Was that the next thing? Yeah, it was literally after after the ma- after the dojo like, Oh, right, yeah, fight the team, buildings. He basically says, alright, watch me! <laughs> he jumps across the buildings, like... I can't do that. <laughs> Not with that attitude. Yeah, exactly. And then the people are like, what if he makes it? No he's one not, makes he's it. He's not gonna make it. And was surprised he doesn't make it. No. He doesn't die though. He just no. kinda <laughs> He sinks into the ground and it just gets the, like it's like really shitty uh Well because it's only a simulation. Only the Matrix has rules. Yeah. And then that's when we learn if you die in the Matrix, you die in real life. Which is one of the Honestly, I, I will say I thought this was better than a lot of the movies we've watched, but it does have some holes, and that is one of them. Yeah, I, I... Shock shock is one thing, but, you know, getting shot in the Matrix and your body suddenly starts bleeding, hard to explain that. I was, th- I was thinking maybe, maybe, like, because, because, <laughs> because when you get in the Matrix, you're not, you can't just, like, you know, cut off sensation. No. Whatever happens, it's like your body <laughs> feels it. So what I'm thinking is, like, the body reacts so strongly to getting shot in real life that maybe it hemorrhages a little bit, especially in the lungs. That's what I was thinking. I guess. I, it's a very hard sell. You're trying a little hard. Well, here. it's either that or the stakes are nothing. Or we like, just... there's no stakes. I mean, they could come up with something. They'd be creative. Like what? You die, you die in the Matrix, you just... Or you just die a shock without the bleeding effect in the real world. Yeah, the bleeding effect was kind of unnecessary... But if it was just if it was just like oh you get killed the matrix the shock of dying will ki- it affects your body too. It wouldn't be as spectacular, but it would make <laughs> sense. <laughs> it was the night. It was the late nineties. It had to be spectacular. Well, obviously, if, the, if, the, if they remade the matrix today, I guarantee you there would be no blood from the mouth effect. Obviously, the movie is all about spectacle. Yeah, well, mostly the effects were the big thing that sold. It's half spectacle, half uh, half symbolism. I guess. Uh, so. Ah, oh, fuck. Where were we? Uh, I want to say real quick that this and a lot of cyberpunk stuff are, uh, including, I imagine, to some degree, Ghost in the Shell, and also this work that I was talking about, are heavily influenced by, you know, uh, do, ro- do androids dream of electric sheep? Uh, that, which, and maybe Neuromancer a little bit? I haven't heard of that one, but uh, I know... William Gibson. He was the... Electric Sheep is a, is a very, very famous, you know, 1968 sci-fi cyberpunk kind of yeah, novel they that based, turned into Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah, Bla- Blade Runner used Android's dreaming of uh, like as its uh, as its foundation. It yeah, was based off of that. That's another movie we got to watch, Blade Runner. Yeah, that's pretty good. You mentioned that. That's yeah. one of them that we can put on the list. So, so we did, we did the jumping off a building scene. Yeah, and he survives. He does. Yeah. He doesn't make it, but he survives. He survives. Uh, then he meets up with uh, with Cipher and is just like and is like. Yeah, man, you made a pretty bad decision. Once I found out what I was getting myself into... I just want it out, man. Yeah, I just want it out. Have some booze. Have some moonshine. A little bit of foreshadowing here. Yeah, and then... And then... 
Neo Disturbed leaves, and then the very next scene is Cypher eating a steak with the meat, with like, the Agent, Agent Smith. The bad guy. Yeah, he's apparently yeah. informing on the crew for the machines, and you know what? It's pretty easy. If I was like a machine, it'd be easy to pay off the informants because it's like, oh, you want this? You want this meat? Have as much of it as you want. You know what? I know this isn't real meat, and when I taste it, it's just a signal sent to my brain. But damn, it tastes good. Yeah. I mean, so, so like, Smith is like, yeah, we'll, we'll get you whatever you want. You want to be an actor? You can make you an actor. We can make you rich, powerful. You don't, you don't have to remember it. All we want is access codes. And that's the one thing Cypher doesn't have, apparently. He's just like, uh, I, I don't have it. I but I know somebody does. who does! Yep. And it's like, oh, you want to you wanna trap Morpheus? All right, sure, I'm, I'm down for so that. So the redneck's the traitor. Yes, the redneck, the, the redneck Joey Pants is a traitor. He's sick of this shit. He yeah. wants out. Yes. Uh, next scene is them dining on slop. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's basically... And then that's when Mouse is just basically saying, Yeah, I, you see the woman... In, you know the woman in the red dress program? From when they were training with yeah. Morpheus earlier? Yeah, basically Morpheus... That, that scene boiled down to Morpheus saying, Don't trust anybody still plugged into the Matrix, because at any moment, they could be an agent. They could just... Because agents could just body surf, apparently. Just whenever they want to. Now, were you listening to me, or were you watching that ass? <laughs> and that ass he turned into... He walks by the woman in the red dress. Yes. Who's? I guess she's attractive. Yeah, she's a she's she's sta- she's like stereotypical blonde bombshell yeah, beauty like Marilyn Monroe. B uh, a B, uh, B plus. Depends on your taste. Yeah, I like petite chicks. Which I was <laughs> saying, the actual females in this movie yeah, are you, very you, comparatively butch. They're like punk girl kind of. Yeah, it really fits. Yeah, like I'm, no, I'm not complaining about it. Yeah, everybody there is just really like haggard down and. The casting choices were pretty good, because everybody there looks, in their own way, kind of scummy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a perfect fit. So then we're at the table eating slop, and the kid, the youngest one... It's like, you wanna... You, so you, how, you, how do you like her? You, you wanna you wanna fuck her? I, I, I can, I can that arrange happen. that. Yeah, I signed her. I did, yeah. Yeah. You just, you can do it, and people are like, mouse! <laughs> That's our mouse. Can you yeah, imagine if digital I... Digital pimp! <laughs> Can you imagine if I were in that world and I was oh, just God. like like my artificial academy too? Hey, how do you like him? I made him myself. <laughs> Dig it, God. I mean, if the, if such a thing happened, then that like sex between real people would be obsolete. And I mean, people are like, "Oh, you nerd, you're just getting off of the digital world." I'm like, wouldn't you? Are we just gonna be shut-ins when the Oculus comes out? Oh, well, it's already <laughs> out, but when I don't know when the technology is perfected. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I, I You're not still... comfortable with this line of conversation. Not, not at the moment. <laughs> not, without, not without some kind of substance. What happens this. after they're eating slop? Uh, so Morpheus like, come in and is like, Yeah, we're going to see the Oracle! He <laughs> just comes in and is like, Alright, we're going to see her. And, and, and Neo's like, Really? We're, we're going to see the Oracle? Okay. <laughs> and they just drop whatever they're doing. They plug themselves in and just... And just go to see her. Yep, they just they, go to her house. Except, except, Cipher is in, is in on it, so he's yep. just this was the thing he was waiting for. Just like everybody's gonna get in, and when they do, we're, oh we're gonna boy. strike. Yep. So, but they wait till after they have the good common courtesy to wait until after Neo sees the or- Oracle. Well, yeah, first he goes in, and there are all those the other and, potentials. And, okay, so the Oracle, you, you make it sound like oh, just a person in the mansion shining on, well, on like fine before, wine, blah 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 blah. Before we get to that ca- character, what the scene before it though? Oh, the pe- when they're driving. No. When oh, they walk no, in I'm and into all it. The they're they're okay. walking inside this really shitty looking building. Yeah, an apartment. It's like building. it's got, got graffiti and everything. It looks like it's in a really bad neighborhood. Yeah. Which you know, do, do bad neighborhoods should they exist in the Matrix? I mean, like ob- carrot and stick. Ob- obviously, I mean they tried to. Again, they tried to make a perfect world for the humans, but they rejected that, so they had to have a <laughs> shitty, realistic world. <laughs> okay, this is what you want, this is what you're gonna get. So they go in, and Morpheus is like, is like telling telling him, yeah, don't be scared, just tell you what you need to hear. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. They, they walk like, in, and there's a... 
So they so they walk in. And there's a bunch of kids just. Well, first doing, there's just a random black lady who's like, "Come in, come in here." Come I in imagine the oracle is just like, "He's gonna. He's in ten seconds from now. He's gonna reach for the door. I want you to open it from him in front, like in front of him. It'll really sell it. <laughs> like it'll really sell it. Like okay, oracle. So the lady leads him into the main room. Yes, leads him into the main room, and he sees like he sees a kid reading. Some kind of Chinese novel. Sees another kid, like, floating a bunch of, uh, blocks. And then he sees the third kid, which you, you, you dubbed... The Last Airbender. White Gandhi. <laughs> yeah, early, yeah, like, Little White Gandhi. Yeah. Who was just bending spoons. Bending spoons, and so Neo's interested, and he's like, how do I do that? Just and, he's, and the kid's basically saying, don't try to bend the spoon, just... Bend yourself. <laughs> Get bent! Get bent. Just, there is no spoon, and he bends the spoon. At least he sees himself doing it. But then they cut to the spoon being straight again. Which, and, but the kid was like, it seemed to be impressed. Just like, well done. We talked about the other kid reading the Chinese book like he was studying up on his wuxia. <laughs> You're gonna need this later when you become an actual, you know, freedom fighter. One. So, yeah. What so, if there are multiple chosen ones? It's well, like the Shaolin monks. Well, that was what was implied in the next scene. Like... Like, she walks in, and, like, he well, walks in and sees the oracle. Was it implied, though? He walks in and sees you've the oracle. You've got the gift. She actually says, you've got the gift. Well, yeah, he walks in and sees the oracle, and it's just a little old black lady sitting by the oven. I'm making cookies. You want a cookie? I can make you a cookie. Oh, don't worry about the vase. <laughs> what vase? <laughs> 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 uh, it's okay, I'll get one of my kids to fix it. The most sagely of our race. Oh yes, and then, and and he and, he, and basically she's like telling him some things about either you know you're the one or you don't. She does a lot of verbal kung fu. Oh, you know what I'm gonna say. You know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna look at your hands. I'm gonna stare at them. I'm gonna say something. You're gonna say. You're gonna say something <laughs> else in response to that. But you already know what I'm going to say back. And she tells him outright that he's not the one. Well, not he. Uh, he says she says y- you're you've got the gift, but you're waiting for something. Yeah. And and then she says, by the way, a- a- Morpheus is in danger, and it's going to come down to either you or him. Yeah, one of you's going to die. But don't fret. Here, have a cookie. When you finish it, you'll feel okay. Then he just walks out with an awkward expression, looks at Morpheus, and takes a bite out of the cookie. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it's like, you know, I don't know what to think anymore. Let's go home. And then Morpheus didn't seem too concerned. He's like, what the Oracle told you was for you. Yep. All right, let's go home. So, on the way back, that's when the trap sprung. They introduced a thing in the Matrix where it's like, if you see... If you experience deja vu, that means they've, they've like, did, did a change. Yeah, they rewrote a code or changed something part of the world. Yeah, and it turns out they covered, they took out the access points in the building they were squatting in. Sealed them in. Yeah, so... so and then the agent's come in after him, right? Yes, and then this is where Mouse dies. He, like, he dies in a really stupid fashion. Oh, yeah, he just pulls out a couple of machine guns and, and gets he just taken. fires, like, Aah! And just gets taken out immediately. He didn't take down any cops. No, nope. not one cop. They just he just fires blindly. They're just like, really, dude. And they just shoot him. Yeah, punk and punk kid did not last. He bleeds out of his mouth, which is you know, it, like it yeah. doesn't make sense. And he's the first to go. Yeah, he's down. Yeah. Uh, so so they they decide you know we're out of options at this point. Let's just go down the drywall. <laughs> Oh yeah, they go inside the walls, which I commented was a shitty simulation because who, re- what realistic architect would put that much space between brick walls? I'm I'm sure it existed in old. You said the building was ancient. Waste of resources. The building. You said it yourself the building was ancient. So they're so... climbing down the inside of the wall. Yes. And then someone and then, sneezes. Well, no, Cipher sneezes. The traitor. Yeah. He purposely gives them away because fuck it. At least I think he purposely gives them away. I couldn't tell. I didn't realize it was him, so I didn't know if it was purposeful or not. Yeah. But the point is, he sneezes, and the well, he coughs a bit, and the cop listens to the wall closely, and then he sneezes, and they're like, "They're in the walls! They're in the walls!" And so they start shooting at the walls. An agent comes and like grabs him, and then Morpheus stays behind to try to fight off the agent. Yeah, he just breaks through the wall and takes on. 
It was Smith, that one, right? Yeah, Smith. Agent Smith. And then Morpheus makes a comment. I caught this, you didn't. But he makes a comment where he says to the agent, You all look the same to me. <laughs> yeah. So, they fight. It, it's pretty cool, but he loses. Yeah. He loses pretty handily because agents are really fucking tough and strong. And yeah. like, super fast. Superpowers. Yeah. So he gets captured, and the others are forced to just fuck off. So, yeah, they fuck off. Uh, Cypher... They go down... Cypher makes the call first from, like, another line to basically say to, like, Tank, the operator, uh, hey, uh, shit's going down. You think you'd give me an exit? They're like, yeah, sure, dude. We trust you. Meanwhile, the others have broken down the drywall to, like, the basement floor. Yeah, they broke down, they evaded the cops, and then they came up through, like, the sewer. Did they? Yeah, they did. Uh, that's that's how I saw it. And so I thought, I thought they came up through the sewer after this next part with Cipher. Uh, is in between because okay. Cipher takes another way out. His his he knows that the cops and shit won't go for him because he's an informant for the Matrix. So he just take he finds the phone, calls it, gets the fuck out of there first. And then when they're going to like you know evac, he, he to Cipher <laughs> takes the old the electric gun. <laughs> Yeah, the Ghostbusters <laughs> slash Ratchet and Clank Tesla weapon. Yes, hit and shoots and, both of them. Yeah, the the two brothers, right? Tank yeah, they're brothers. And, uh, what Tank was the and Dozer. Do Tank and Dozer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So he shoots them with electric Tesla gun, and he yeah. takes the he takes the microphone. Yeah, and he's now he's talking. Like, to the I killed them. You suck. I, I hate Morpheus. I'm going back to the Matrix. Meanwhile, Trinity's trying to talk him down. It's Doesn't like, work. It's not real. So what? Better than this shit. <laughs> if I have to follow like Morpheus's orders or follow the Matrix's, I'll just follow the Matrix. Yeah, he, I get he, stake in the Matrix. He kills. Uh, he kills. Um, Switch the the girl with the platinum hair. He kills and, the uh, bo the male first. He kills a yeah apoc yeah apoc <laughs> yo yo. He kills apoc and then he kills Switch as Switch just cries for her life. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> that was sad. Yeah. So basically, two characters that aren't well developed just so, get killed off. Well, and he he doesn't really like even shoot them or anything. He just kind of. Just unplugs them. Yeah, which I guess is like a shock death or something. Well, it's like your mind is separated from your body. The shock just... That's what it. happens if you're diving when someone takes you out. Yeah. You gotta eject your USBs properly. Yes. <laughs> so then he's like, you know, if Morpheus is right, and it'll take a, mir it'll take a miracle for me to unplug the, uh, his. So, I mean, if yes or no? <laughs> Even if he is the one, that doesn't mean the universe is conspiring for him. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, so, so, then, so uh, yeah, what, what, the older one, right? Uh, the, no, the younger one. one tank. So, so, so when he's like taunting them, he's like, uh, let me tell you, are, I guess the question was, are you in love with him or not? Oh yeah. Ta while this is going on, Cypher does some creepy stuff and, yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. uh, that's with, a, with that's... Trinity. <laughs> Some creepy stuff. He sits on her unconscious body and, like, you goes know, nose to nose to her. I've always loved you. You're a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Man, why couldn't you love me? And wasn't that <laughs> the what, worst Sas Sas Sasuke. Wasn't that before he killed the two? Yeah, it was before. He's just kind of taunting them. And then he just sits on Morpheus's like, lap and goes, Surprise, asshole! <laughs> he he does re for his death for his like things leading up to his death scene. He really acts well. Just yeah, just the creepiest dude. Then he gets Tesla'd. Yeah, Tank reveals himself to be alive, and 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 like Cipher is like, how can this be? And then he gets shot. And good riddance. Yeah, he's he's dead. And then the remaining two survivors get ejected out. Yeah. And that ends Act Two. Uh. We're at 50 minutes. Oh, wow. We, we spent a lot. Yeah, we gotta get through the actual story okay. property. Okay, so then we get to Act 3. Uh, they're basically saying, well, M Morpheus knows the access codes to Zion, and if they get it, we're fucked. Oh, yeah, Morpheus is still captured. Yeah, he man. was captured, and they're gonna, like, you know, use some ultra-powerful Matrix-like serums they to get him They injected him with mercury. That shit sucks. Literal truth serum. Yeah. Uh, so then they're like, well, we gotta kill him, and Neil's like, we can't do that shit. All right, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go in. back in to save him, because I'm not the one. 
He's like the Oracle told me this. She said that one of us were gonna was gonna die here, but you know what I'm deciding? Fuck the Oracle. <laughs> That's a great attitude to have. So it's just to prove her wrong. He's going in. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. <laughs> Shockamole. <laughs> we're gonna fly the Shockamole. Uh, so he got he and Trinity both go back. Yeah, in. they go in. They they basically go and get all the guns. Yeah, and they take a few of them. Yeah. And then they then they go into the building. Well, meanwhile, uh, Agent the building? Smith is Agent Smith is is having a monologue about the nature of humanity, about how much he fucking hates working in the Matrix. I want to be free. I want to go outside. And I was like, he's an artificial intelligence. Can't they just like put him in a machine and make a new one? Maybe it's like he was assigned there and he can't leave because he's a program specially designed to do this. And he hates it, and he knows it, and he hates it. He's like, Julie. <laughs> Julie. I love the Pokemon trading card game. Please kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so they go in. They actually go in through the front door. Yeah, they they just, don't make any attempt to be stealthy. They go, well, he goes in through the, the checking terminal before. Yeah, and the, and the cop, reasonably thinking, there's no way this guy could be carrying like any kind of guns. Just like... All right, you got any uh, keys or loose change? He just opens up his trench coat. And there's all the gun. It's like the that retailer dude in, in Resident Evil Four. Just, just and he's impressed. He's like, holy shit! And actually, I I don't know how like martial arts physics work, but I think he survives because all Neo does is just kind of punch him. Yeah. And then he just takes out his guns and they and he guns them down. One of the other most iconic scenes of the movie. Yeah. And then comes a, a, a big fucking gun battle, like, you know, on the first floor, where they shoot all these cops slash military slash private security dudes. Yeah. I think it's all one at this point. But none of none of the agents are there. They're just going through mooks. Yeah. And they get to the elevator. They get to the elevator. They set a bomb there. We don't know it's a bomb. It's just some weird looking device. Yeah. But... It's, a, it's a future bomb. They, uh... They cut the elevator so that it'll fall down while they go up. And right. They blow the front floor, and all you, you see the fireball in slow motion, and then, you know what you see? What? You see the ages just with Morpheus, and then the sprinklers activate on them. And they just don't really react at all. No, that's kind of their thing. They're yeah. very stoic dudes. It's, it works well, because, you know, machines are emotionless. Yeah. Or supposed to be. Smith, apparently, is filled... His hard drive is filled with anger. Yeah. So, they go up the floor, they start kicking more ass. I don't know if they actually have a plan. They don't seem like they have a plan. Do they get to... They get to the agent's room, don't they? Well, they do, but... What the, beforehand, they go up th to the top, they kill... They start wasting all, of, like, everybody up there. But an agent manages to get up there. On the roof? Yeah. And he, he, and then Neo tries to shoot him, and he just kind of does this crazy-ass, like, multi-dodge. Yeah. And then Neo's like, oh, fuck! And so the agent fires back at him, and he does the limbo. He does the thing. Yeah. It's the another, scene. Another iconic scene has been probably the most iconic, I would say. Oh yeah, is yeah. The bullet dodging. Yes, the. But he still gets slightly tagged. Yeah, he gets he gets, he gets grazed, and then and then while all this is going on, Trinity just sneaks up behind him and boom, headshot. Yep. Uh. Then so, they get a helicopter, right? Yeah. So then Trinity's like, "I'm gonna download all the the instruction. Like, I'm gonna download how to pilot, pilot a helicopter. Get on the machine gun." <laughs> Get on the chain gun. We're going to do this. Yep. So they go. So the other agent walks in. It's just like, I. they got me. They got me. Your turn. <laughs> but before that could happen, they just, the helicopter just. The, the, the helicopter drops down GTA style in front of the giant glass wall. Yeah, and then Smith is like, no. <laughs> and he just, he just, so he fucking empties the entire, I think the entire, like, box. All around Morpheus, mind you. All around. That's pretty impressive. Which I was saying if the agents were smart, they would have just stepped in front of Morpheus, well, but... their AI is not, not that good AI. Not perfect. So they get him, and then, uh... And then, they escape with him. Morpheus he-mans his way out of the handcuffs. Yes. There are, there are no handcuffs. Yeah, and, uh, Neo catches him because <laughs> Morpheus gets tagged in the leg. Yeah. Uh, so, then as Trinity's, like, like, getting the fuck out of Dodge... 
the helicopter gets tagged, I guess, in the hydraulics or something. I was gonna say, it's just started spurting red, and I thought, what, do helicopters bleed? Uh, they do if they're struck in, like, you know, fluid-filled points. I guess there's red fluid. Yeah. Anyway, the helicopter goes down. Yeah, the helicopter goes down, but they manage to, like, drop Morpheus off on a, on a nearby skyscraper. And, uh, and Neo looks at the helicopter, sees that Trinity's still, like, there, and has this idea. He just kind of grabs the rope, the bungee rope he's attached to, and just starts pulling. And at this point, it's looking like he's going to try to He-Man the whole helicopter. But, fortunately, it doesn't come to that. Trinity just shoots the Trin rope and grabs it. Yeah, she has the same line of thought, apparently. They're in sync. Yeah, I guess that explains a lot. Like, I guess that explains, like, the final few minutes of the movie. So that after that point, they're all just trying to get the fuck out of it. Yeah, they're, they're like, okay, we just, we'll cut our losses, we'll, we'll all leave. Mission accomplished, we saved Morpheus, let's get out of here. But, they go down to the tunnel, which is like an exit, and uh, they get Morpheus out of there. Trinity leaves, but then the bum tur that's watching all this happen. They see, they go out through the self, through the telephone, it did... This is, I guess, t telephone booths were still a thing in 99. Yeah. I, and the bum sees them disappear into the phone. He's like, holy shit! Yeah, and then he turns into Smith. Yes. Yeah, and then... Because Smith can do that. He just possesses random people as necessary. And then Neo, like, sees the situation he's in. He sees an agent in front of him. Sees stairs behind him. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna fight. Yeah, and, and then they we, fight. Have, we have the epic martial arts 1v1. Uh, the two biggest characters in the movie... Mr. Anderson and Mr. Smith. <laughs> Those crazy wuxia names. <laughs> they, the fight scene's actually not that bad. Yeah. I mean, we got Mission Impossible dude versus guy in the suit. Yeah. Guy in the suit doing pretty well. <laughs> and then, like, he's gonna try to fatality, like, Mr. Anderson by just holding him down as the train hits the both of them, because Smith can't die. Obviously. But, so... So he keeps calling him Mr. Anderson, and finally Neo has enough. He's like, my name is Neo. And he just kind of ramps him into the ceiling and then just leaves him there to get hit. Yeah, which he does. But it's all for nothing as he steps out of the fucking train. And the hobo's got... I drew a comparison to Gaunt's here, that one scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what if there were a crossover between Gaunt's and the Matrix? Yeah, I could see that. Crossover between anything and the Matrix. They're all just separate sub-realities. Yeah. There are a lot of casualties in this movie. A lot of people die. All the people that Smith possesses and then just abandons. Well, he abandons them, but they don't necessarily die when he leaves them. They oh, just... I'm sure the hobo that got hit by a train is fine. Oh, no, he's dead. But, yeah, there's a lot of... There's a lot big body count in this movie. And yeah. the, most of them don't even realize that they're serving evil. No. It's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty fucked up situation. So at this point, it's just an extended chase scene between uh, Neo and all the agents. Yep. And it's pretty unique in that it's not one big long guys are just running after other guys. It's, it's in more a like It's more like he's just running and then whoever person he happens to see just turns into an agent and tries to kill him. Yeah. It's They're very... Literally everywhere. Very it follows -y. <laughs> Oh, we, we skipped an important scene. Oh, really? The... Yeah, the sudden... The sudden love reveal... Oh, yeah, that yeah. apparently Trinity... No, that's coming up. That, no, I mean, it's... Hit, did, it, does it? Well, okay. I and thought she just told him at the phone booth. At the phone booth, she's like... She's like, the Oracle told... Everything the Oracle told me came true, except for one thing. Oh, and that's it? Yeah. Okay, and so... And she can't tell him what it is, because I don't want Senpai to notice me. Okay, well, then chase scene. So, He's yeah. going through the hallways, getting chased by agents who are appearing in rooms in front of him, because yes. people are in those rooms. Yeah. And then he finally runs, he finally almost gets to, like, the checkpoint, and then an agent shoots him. The like, in, in the door he bursts in, just point blank, he shoots him with this Israeli long gun. The instant transmission can only work if I, if I imagine a person to teleport to. Oh, God. I have to sense their key. Goku follows. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him touch you. Goku hey, person. guys. Oh, runs away. <laughs> it'll go, it'll teleport wherever you are. Frieza's nightmare. <laughs> it's just Goku haunting him, teleporting everywhere he goes in the universe. <laughs> that would keep him in line. Uh, anyway, so he gets he gets shot multiple times. Then he's against the wall. He's bleeding out apparently, and, and he's dead. But he's not bleeding in the real world. Yes, in the real world. His Although body... his heart does apparently stop for yeah. a time. Yeah. 
And then, and then it treated, and then, well, in the real world, they're being besieged by robots, because they managed to find them. Oh, yeah. They ran the trace. And but they can't use the EMP until Neo's out. Because they'll kill him otherwise. Yeah. And then, and then Trinity's like, they're like, the Oracle told me that I would be in love with the dead man. I love you. And well, just, no, you'd be in, she'd be in love with the one, she said. Well, that and a dead man. I heard that line. Okay, that I didn't. I don't remember the, that, but whatever. The one will die. That's why she was so nervous because oh. she was like, because she was like, well, well, he did die temporarily. Yeah, he did. So the prophecy's been fulfilled. But the love reveal was just so there was out no, of left. It was so out of the blue. There was no foreshadowing. There None. Was, it's like it's the the movie. I would say eighty percent of the movie is acceptable. This is not. They, that was really shoehorned in there. Like. Like, they barely interacted! Yeah, they were just on the run, and she didn't show any interest in anyone the whole movie. Yeah, she was stoic this entire time, and... Yeah, it was... Maybe they were hate-fucking, like, behind the scenes. <laughs> they were already having sex? Yeah, sure. Like, well, why... You don't need that when you got the Matrix cherry, you just... That's true, Jack you get the lady to go to Bouse's virtual brothel. The lady, yeah. Yeah, Trinity's just look, has this choice of whatever <laughs> co- flavors of men she wants. So she gives him... Se- ch- I will guarantee you one thing. There's a lot of problems in the real world. Sex is not one of them. So she gives him true love's first kiss. Yeah, which so is then- okay because it's a lady kissing an unconscious guy. <laughs> and he wakes up. And then he realizes, you know what? I came back from death. I can do anything. I am the, the just, one. The agents look and they fire bullets at him. He just stops him with his mind. And in, in, in the other signature scene of the oh, movie. Oh, yeah, he doesn't actually jack out yet. He's still uh, in the Matrix after yeah. the kiss. Well, he needs, to, he needs to kick the agent's asses. Yeah, and he stops the bullet because he is the one. He yeah. can control the Matrix now. Then he, then he does Chase Young blocking. Oh, yeah. He blocks just, one hand, just like, boom. Utterly bored. Yeah, and this is Smith, by the way, and Smith is noticeably pissed. Yeah. Uh, so then he, he, like, beats him back. Dives into him. Yeah, he does. And Smith explodes. He does the belly button bugging. See how you like it, Smith. Yeah. And then he just explodes. Um, I will tell you now, he survives this. Uh, yeah, I, I think. I well, that. I he that. survives this, but he's not. He's not entirely. Um, he's not all himself. No, he he's never the same again after that. Not what, when you've had someone inside you. <laughs> and then the other two agents just look at each other and fuck off. Yeah, they're like. No, I don't want to get my ass kicked. They don't pay Which me enough. Which is kind of weird because they, they, you can just kill them and they'll they'll come by somewhere else. Maybe they they fear pain. The AI can a can a robot fear fear? <laughs> the, for the first time, the robots felt something they haven't felt in a while. Fear. And then he gets to the telephone and gets out. Yeah, and then immediately when he gets out, they hit the EMP. Everybody's saved. All's good. Ship's still totally operable. All that shit that got destroyed, n- nothing vital. Yeah, it'll, it'll buff out. Uh, so then the movie ends with the monologue, I guess, Neo talking to the robots, like, like I'm all powerful now. I'll lead them to salvation. Uh, there's nothing you could do to stop it. Puts on sunglasses. Play play, play the Rage Against the Machine. I'm a fly in the sky. Yep, the he end. just suddenly supermans into the sky. Yes, as uh, Wake Up by Rage Against the Machine plays. Yeah. Another rock. The, the, that and, uh, and Rob Zombie. Yeah, the two ro- rocky part of the sound pa- soundtrack. Yes. And, yeah. And they made two sequels. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm familiar with the sequels existence. That's two sequels and an anthology. Yeah. Yeah. You can watch the Animatrix now. Oh, yeah, we can. <laughs> so, this movie has a lot of, like, Gnostic themes. Yeah. Like, with that and, like, oh, you're the chosen one. Re- like, oh, you'll be resurrected and then become the... Neo is the Messiah. Yes. Yeah, the Messiah. Uh, demons. Fate. So, it, it's very it's very vague, which means it's it won't really offend anybody. It seems like it's just whole new... Machine cult religion the yeah. deal, which you know that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you? What were? What did you like about this movie? Well, I mentioned before, it's got a lot of aside from it's got a lot of religious parallels, but it also has a lot of parallels to uh, self affirmation. The kind of you know, Believe the it. only thing holding you back is your attitude, which is you know, it's a good message. It. It's a message I try to, like, you know, remember everything. It's a problem day. for an extremely large amount of people. Like, yeah. everyone's suffering from depression, for one thing. Of course. This is, a, this is a movie you want to watch if you want to combat depression. Yeah. 
Uh, Gotta believe in the power within. The, uh, the, the, the choreography with the fight scenes, it's very heavily dated. Very wusha. Yeah, it's very it's very unrealistic. You you called out out the unrealistic kick Trinity did to that cop in the very first scene of the movie, where she just kind of kicks and hits the guy on guy's head on her shoulder. Oh, I did I didn't mean unrealistic as in like no one could do that stretch. I meant as in it didn't. It looked like it obviously did not hit him. Oh yeah. Like that was poor filming. Yeah, the filming the the cinematography was was nice. Yeah, that was also a lot of what got the movie a lot of credibility. At yeah, the time. also its use of slow motion, which yeah. uh, which people kind of ran to the ground for the next decade. That's what it was revolutionary for was the uh, the slow motion and the pan around shots they did by setting up a bunch of cameras in a line. Yeah. And they just set them off in a sequence rather than rotating single camera around. Yeah, it's we very... studied a little bit of the Matrix in a film class. I mean, that's how that's how you know it then. Yeah, yeah. Among other things, I well, mean, it's parodied everywhere. I, from what I read, because the the article, the Reddit article, which <laughs> which finally inspired me, yeah, we'll we'll do this episode, said that the reason the siege the effects. I don't, I don't say CG because it's not all, all computer generated, but the effects. Yeah. The reason why they're so good is because it's actually very little CG. They they use like practical like and just kind of use like computers to just place the things where they where they go. Right. So yeah, and the re I guess the reason why the other two movies fail so hard is they switch straight to CG. The and sequels. Yeah, the sequels. And the sequels get fucking crazy in terms of, like, concept. It's like, the first movie's about Hero's journey to become all-powerful, but then, once the character's all-powerful, where do you go from there? Yeah. So, that's where the fight scenes kind of get really ridiculous, and then the plot gets very convoluted. Yeah. Uh, and then Rev and then Revolutions doesn't revolutionize anything. Honest so. Honestly, I was more frustrated with Neo throughout most of the movie than oh, anything. Oh, because... Just from him, him having so much trouble, like, adapting his mind to, you know, I, th this is a world in which I can do anything. Well, to be fair, he, uh, <laughs> he was, a, like, a, a corporate, like, drone for most of his life. This is all kind of new to him. I imagine it's all some place in, like, the course of a week. Is that any, difference th any different than our lives? Fair enough. Maybe he doesn't watch, like... I like, mean, I'm a fully lucid dreamer, so if... If I were the one, things would be different, you believe me. <laughs> yeah, if you were the one. Maybe Joey Pants was, like, disappointed because he wasn't the one. Yeah, He's Joey like, the Cypher? Yeah, Cypher. Uh, so, what, what rating would you give this movie? Uh, I liked it better than Fargo. That's... I liked it better than Inception, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I have six out of ten, maybe? <laughs> High praise coming from you. Uh, seven. Yeah. I maybe said this before. Maybe seven this. and a half. The effects definitely hold up. Oh no! The uh, any movie that's like really old that has effects that still look really good, like Jurassic Park and and this that that's an automatic plus in my book. Because man, kind of makes me wonder why the fuck they use cheap CG to do everything if it is obviously going to look like shit. The big issues are as we the shoehorned romance plot. Oh god, that was awful. The the number one, number two, the. The bleeding in real life that didn't make any, re you know, r logical sense. <laughs> that's the that's minor in the grand scheme of things, but yeah, that's kind of a sore thumb. And my third complaint of the three is the, abu I mean, obviously it's an action movie, but the abundance of guns. They didn't get very, <laughs> well, they didn't a... get very creative with their dream world. I can do anything. Fights. It's just load up on a bunch of guns and go to town. Well, on I kind of want to see some hand, energy on blasts. One hand it's a world based on 1999, so yeah, of course there'd be a lot of fucking guns. I guess, uh, but I mean, uh, I guess he didn't realize he was the one yet. But. Uh, and on the other hand, like the the machines are gonna think, hmm, sword, gun, sword, gun. What about palm energy blast? How about that? Can, is that what no, you see that no, in the, the point is to make it seem realistic so that humans <laughs> won't go, what the fuck? That's impossible. What do we care? They're in the Matrix. <laughs> Better they know the truth. Well, no, I guess. No, they're... that's why they failed the first time. Well, they, they mentioned in this movie that they tried to make like a perfect world yes. the first time and it failed. They, so, but I mean, what would happen if they like 
It wouldn't be confirmed, obviously. Not like Morpheus going around, you're in the Matrix. This is what the Matrix is. Well, but Mor just them seeing things that they can't explain. That would inspire some doubt around the world. Yeah, that's the point. That's like some people, <laughs> that doubt lingers, and then they go, what the fuck is going on? And then that's when they go to him, they're like, hey, well, this so world then, seems fake, huh? So then what? The, the machines have to redesign the whole Matrix world? I guess that would be harmful to the humans, because they have to find new hacking methods. <laughs> to Zion. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the other two movies because I feel like this movie we'll get there. works well as like a standalone. Yeah. The other two movies, we'll get. Yeah, we'll get to the other two movies, but at some point. Yeah. <laughs> some of, they may piss you off though. Ah uh, well, yeah, we'll see. All right. Uh. I think we got a little over our intended time frame. Yeah. But yeah, no, this was a very this was a very enjoyable watch. Uh, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you found something you actually <coughs> liked, rather than just tolerate it. You at. I'm going to say this now. You, you gave Fight Club a 1 out of 10? Well, I don't know about that. I I couldn't see myself re-watching it anytime soon. Maybe if it's an episode on this show. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, yeah. Alright, well, that's it. That's it for this uh, episode. Thank, thank you for listening. Uh, next episode... Well, yeah, let's leave it open. We I'll you haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. But you got a few ideas. Yeah. Fortunately, I prepaid Takahashi this time, so... So, uh, I won't have to be forced Not to too watch. too much. Yeah. Two and a half hour. Two and a quarter hours. So, to be fair, you're, you're enjoying Urase, so that, that's kind of cheating. Yeah. We made a deal. Yeah. All right. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for we'll watching. see you next Fourth Seat Cinema. See you next Fourth Seat Cinema. Bye-bye. <laughs>